Michael, thank you for coming. I'm on a short notice. Yeah, I know sure. we were going to do it later, but Wall Street mood gets bearish. I see red all over. Why? Well, I think there's, you know, the initial reaction following the Fed as well as the European Central Bank's announcement of unlimited bond buying was seen as very bullish. Now, in the very short term, people are digesting that news and saying, okay, well, yes, stimulus is bullish, but perhaps because they're getting so aggressive, things are much worse than might otherwise be thought, right? So the market seems to be digesting this period here, but as much as there is red on the screen, yes. it seems that there are still enough positives happening within the market. The right things are outperforming. Uh, emerging markets look like they want to start to outperform, even though you have some uh, weak manufacturing data from China. So this is, let's call it a period of consolidation. Mm -hmm. But let's not forget, you have central banks around the world Japan, pushing money, yesterday. Japan, uh -huh. uh, Brazil, they're all doing it. And, you know, it is, and it's an interesting phenomenon. All these central banks are stimulating. Yes. If you're a country and your central bank is not, you are at a disadvantage. Because every, it's almost like injecting steroids in an athlete. If you want to stay on a level playing field, you have to inject steroids in yourself. So if monetary policy is happening in certain countries, it causes all central banks to act mm -hmm. in the same way. That inherently should be bullish for risk assets and bad for bonds. Bad for bonds. You know what Fed did last Thursday, and then were you expecting this, first of all? And second of all, you know, some of the Fed members are giving mixed signals. They've been talking, even today, right, Charles Evans? Right. And yes, the day before, yes, Dudley and uh, Lacker. So why are they giving us mixed uh, signals? Well, okay, so on the first question, I do think it was expected you in terms expecting. of... Right, because the European Central Bank acted first, right? right. By, so I think they were going to do unlimited buying. It looks like 2012, with hindsight, will be the year when central banks introduced the word unlimited into yes. policy. Now, I do think that the mixed messages are probably a good thing because the market likely wants to hear that, yes, they will do this unlimited bond buying, but there is some hesitation in terms of, one, uh, whether it's going to be effective, and two, how long it should last. I think the market actually likes some, some discussion on that. Because Does the market like the open-ended side of it? Well, uh, the risk assets ideally should, because if, if central banks are trying to force inflation back into the system, right. markets, a lot of, many risk, many markets are really driven by inflation expectations. So if central banks try and push that onto us, that's good for risk assets. Whether it translates into the economy is a whole different issue, mm -hmm. but price likes it. In this right now context, what are you telling your clients? Where do you tell them to invest right now? Well, you know, I think bonds still look incredibly unattractive. Especially, unattractive. Especially, you know, bonds are really a play on deflation. They are a play on lower prices, and they are a play that central banks will not be effective. Hmm. Now, that may still be the case. I mean, in Japan, clearly, the Bank of Japan has not been effective for the last two decades in terms of trying to counter deflation, which sent the Japanese government bond to all-time historic lows. In the United States, you have the Federal Reserve. In Europe, you have the European Central Bank. They're all trying to get ultra-aggressive to prevent that Japan-like scenario. Bonds, if the, bo if, if the Fed and European Central Bank get their way, are not the place to be because they're yielding less than the rate of inflation. So I, I think for, for anybody looking at what to do with money now, is, as much as the S&P 500 is up roughly 17, 18% total mm -hmm. return for the year, that's actually probably not done yet, especially given where bond yields are. Hmm. So uh, my producer says that our time is up, but not bonds. I guess you're talking about equities. We're still, we're going to continue with that, Michael, I promise. Sure, sure. Our time is up, but we'll take you again. Burda sohbetimiz sona erdi. Söz tekrar sizde dinleyin.